the NBA might change the basketball they use to this. We've actually already seen it used on the NBA court just a couple months ago. Things are about to get interesting. Now, this is not the first time something like this has happened. It really wasn't that long ago. The NBA tried switching their ball. Currently active players like LeBron and Chris Paul actually used that ball for a brief period of time, and it went terribly. It took quite a few big changes for the basketball to get where it is today. When the sport was created over 100 years ago, it was just a soccer ball in a basket. The creator was just a PE teacher named James Naismith. But then the sport started to catch on, so he reached out to Spalding and Bros to create a ball. It was four inches bigger than a soccer ball and now made out of leather. In 1948, we would get our first molded version and they reduced it by two inches. It was around the same time the NBA would begin. Then we would see a massive change made in 1970, going from four panels to eight. It wasn't until 1983, just a year before Michael Jordan's arrival to the NBA, where we would see Spalding release its full grain leather ball, basically the same ball we see today. But between then and now, something weird happened. The year is 2006. Commissioner David Stern in the league in conjunction with Spalding decide to swap out the traditional basketball leather in favor of a microfiber composite material. A material that sporting good manufacturers were praising as the industry's future. They were cheaper to produce, easy to break in, and at the time, it really wasn't that uncommon to see these balls on the court. Several high school and college leagues had already adapted these synthetic balls. The sentiment from the league was that the NBA was just catching up with the new technology. And just after the draft, they would have a launch event in New York City. Guys like Paul Pierce and Kenny Smith were in attendance, but from that point on, things went downhill. They would send out a ball to every player to start practicing with and getting used to. 14-year NBA vet Steven Jackson wasn't excited about it from the jump. Right off the rim, when I first started gripping it, I didn't like it. It felt like plastic. Concerns were brewing. But then we hit training camp where things escalated to a full-on panic. Shaq would say, it felt like one of those cheap balls you buy at the toy store. I look for shooting percentages to be way down and turnovers to be way up, because when the ball gets wet, you really can't control it. Whoever did this needs to be fired. It was terrible, a terrible decision, awful. But somehow, some way, this ball made it onto the court for a tip off of the season opener, and stars of the league were not shying away from their disapproval. Ray Allen claimed that it changed a lot of what we are and who we are. At the beginning of the year, I kept an open mind to it, but overall, you see the league. Shots aren't like they used to be. Every player I've talked to is in disagreement with the ball. The most common concern brought up was the inconsistency of the surface. Moisture, which is unavoidable to a certain degree, would cause the ball to become super slippery. But when dry, it had a lot more friction. So many players were claiming it was causing cuts on their hands. Jackson said, we saw a lot of guys with band-aids on their fingers. Steve Nash said it tore his fingers apart. Ray Allen was having to constantly put lotion all over his hands because his fingers were cracking and it was causing splits on his fingertips. Even Rajah Bell claimed his extremely painful looking fingernail split was due to this new ball. There was really no one coming to its defense, so then we saw Mavericks owner Mark Cuban, who is no stranger of controversy with the league, become extremely critical of their decision and decided to take matters into his own hands. He requested that the physics department at the University of Texas commission a comparison of both the old ball and new ball. They came back with some key findings. When it came to the surface, they weren't able to find evidence of the ball being able to cause cuts like many players were suggesting, but they did back up their claims about it becoming more slippery than its leather counterpart when it got wet. They also discovered that the ball actually bounced 5 to 8% less than the old one, as well as 30% more erratically. At this point, the NBA was left with no choice. The NBA is putting their new basketball on the rack for good. This synthetic basketball was introduced at the beginning of the season. After numerous player complaints about the ball, Commissioner David Stern decided to put the leather ball back on the court January 1st. I won't make a spirited defense in respect to the ball. In hindsight, we could have done a better job. I take responsibility for that. Our players' response to this particular composite ball has been consistently negative and we're acting accordingly. Although testing performed by Spalding and the NBA demonstrated that the new composite basketball was more consistent than the leather and statistically, there's been an improvement in shooting, scoring, and ball-related turnovers, the most important statistic is the view of our players. Now I had heard about the brief introduction of this ball before making the video and I always just assumed it had some major effect on what we saw on the court, but as Stern alluded to, despite all the negativity surrounding it, we really didn't see anything significant. In a sport like baseball, this is a constant conversation with the MLB changing things all the time, which can have major effects on things like home run frequency on a year-to-year -year basis. I thought we would see something like that here, but not really. 
while you had some guys putting up less numbers like Kobe Bryant or Ray Allen, who shot just 31% from three with the new ball, and then 40% the rest of the season when they went back to the old one. You also had guys like LeBron James and Steve Nash that actually had slightly better numbers with the composite ball. The change just didn't really seem to have much effect on the league as a whole. Its introduction coincided with the start of the season where we always see players go through slumps. For those going through one, they now had something to blame it on. At the end of the day though, if it's not broke, don't fix it. The players had no complaints about the ball that had been used for over 20 years at that point. LeBron said it best. That's your comfort. I mean, without your basketball, it doesn't work. That was my biggest problem. Why would you change something that means so much to us? This was by all accounts an epic failure for the NBA. Most didn't think we would ever see them try something like this again, but right now, a very similar situation is brewing. See, leading up to the 2021 season, the NBA switched manufacturers for their game balls, going from Spalding to Wilson. It was a small change, really just a logo change. Wilson made a conscious effort to make the transition nearly unnoticeable, even using the same exact leather source that Spalding did. But just like in 2006, when Spalding introduced their latest groundbreaking technology, Wilson just recently announced their latest basketball advancement, a basketball that is 3D printed and completely airless. It looks more like a wiffle ball than a basketball, but some serious time and effort was put into the development of this. They are not messing around. They have been working on this for over five years now. You're probably familiar with 3D printing, but they're using a much different technology than you're probably used to. They partnered up with a company who mainly prints devices for the aerospace and medical industries. The ball actually begins as just a bed of powder and a laser, in Wilson's own words, almost etch sketches the ball. Like magic, it kind of just appears out of the powder. Then they put it through rigorous testing, including on-court testing, and they've reached the point where the ball is the same exact weight, size, and bounce of their regulation ball. It was first revealed to the public during NBA All-Star Weekend, where KJ Martin of the Houston Rockets would bring it out to perform in the NBA Slam Dunk Competition. During its brief time out there, it seemed to perform like any other basketball we are used to, at least when it came to what they were using it for. This really got everyone thinking about the NBA potentially using this ball in the future. The creator said, there's still work to do, but we are thrilled about the possibilities this ball represents. One of the things we wanted to improve upon was inflation. Air pressure changes over time in different environments, hot or cold, needing other pieces of equipment like a pump or needle. One of the ways to handle this is to make it airless. Before every game, you see refs testing out balls, asking players which one they want to go with. Is the difference all in their head? Maybe. But maintaining consistency, especially with something like air pressure, is hard to pull off. So trying to eliminate these kind of factors outside of the control of players is great for the sport. We've seen the amount of controversy something as little as air pressure can cause in other leagues, such as the NFL with Tom Brady, the New England Patriots, and the Deflategate saga. Now, it's also this airless feature that is everyone's biggest concern when it comes to this ball. Wilson made it very clear. A lot of their research and development was put into replicating the exact weight and bounce of a basketball. I think they were very intentional showing it off in the slam dunk contest. The one event you can guarantee shooting would not be involved. I'm not sure about the exact physics or science here, but considering the flight time of the ball during something like a three-point attempt, slight changes to the aerodynamics can have a massive effect, and this doesn't seem like a slight change. There's quite literally holes everywhere, just allowing the air to pass right through. I'm sure they have this on their mind, I'm just not really sure how they can solve this. The holes also bring up a couple more concerns, one being from a safety standpoint. Hair, fingernails, jersey, other random things could potentially get caught in it. And then there's the feel of the ball. It doesn't appear to have a texture resembling the current basketball really in any way. I don't know what their plans for the future are in that regard, but relatively soon this will be coming to market. It won't be used in the NBA in the near future, especially in its current stages, but this is clearly the hope for Wilson. This isn't some random company. It's quite literally the company that makes NBA in-game balls as we speak. It's insane how similar this situation is to the one we saw in 2006. The main difference is that the NBA had a lot more reason to be confident with that 06 ball as they had already gotten the chance to see it used in high school, college, and overseas. Something I think we would obviously have to see before making it to an NBA tip-off. The ball is clearly in its early stages. It most likely won't look like this very long, but this is new technology and it's advancing quickly. And just based on the amount of times we've seen the basketball go through major overall throughout history, the NBA's future will likely feature a basketball using this new technology in some capacity. I'm just excited to give it a try, but go check out what happens when you disrespect LeBron.